In this video I describe what I have found out about preheaters for continuous distillation of moonshine, as well as making various other diversions. One of the most significant things I've found is that they're not really necessary, or at least not with my process. The idea behind a preheater is that a continuous distillation column has a temperature gradient from hot at the bottom to cooler at the top, and this gradient varies in one direction so that any stage of the column is hotter than the stages above it and cooler than those below it. Wash is added at the stage of the column appropriate to its alcohol concentration. A column with both rectifying and stripping parts will have a top alcohol concentration of over 96% and a bottom of under 0.1%. The tray corresponding to a wash concentration of around 10% is likely to be about two-thirds of the way up and have a temperature of 91 degrees centigrade. If you inject wash into the column cold at this point, then it will cool that plate condensing proportionally more alcohol, which will then carry a higher alcohol concentration to the plates below, lowering their boiling point and so on down to the bottom of the column resulting in a lower bottom temperature and therefore wasted alcohol down the drain. I experimented with different stripping columns, including a packed column and this bubble cap column I made from bits of copper pipe and glass candle shades. With these columns I was using manual adjustment of steam power, and with cold wash injection my bottom alcohol concentration was between 2 and 3%, which is intolerably high. I therefore built a preheater and this resulted in the bottom alcohol concentration falling by around a third. So this seemed like a step in the right direction but the bottom concentration was still intolerably high. The preheater is a pretty simple device made of a 100mm length of 28mm copper piping closed at either end with two pence UK sterling coins that happen to fit perfectly inside a 28mm pipe. At the bottom there is a 3mm brass pipe for wash inflow, above which is a band heater of 80 watts. At the top is a thermal well for the temperature sensor and a short 3mm diameter brass outflow pipe carrying the hot wash into the column. The preheater is mounted close to the column and within the same lagging. It is controlled with a PID temperature controller allowing you to set the desired temperature and for a constant flow rate this will keep the temperature within a fraction of a degree of the desired target. The target temperature is taken from this graph. You measure the wash alcohol concentration with a hydrometer and then note the boiling point of that mixture. You set the preheater temperature as close to that boiling point as you can without it actually boiling. If it does boil then you'll be adding a mixture of vapour and liquid and the vapour will add latent heat of vaporisation which is not controlled and that will mess up the fine balance of your column. So you need to keep the temperature close to the boiling point but sufficiently below it that you're confident that it never boils. The boiling point does vary somewhat with atmospheric pressure and these temperature sensors aren't that precise so you'll end up with a target temperature 1 or 2 degrees below the boiling point. We want to minimise the power consumption of the still, so we don't want to waste the heat in the hot liquid that comes out of the bottom. We rig up a heat exchanger that takes cold wash and hot bottoms, and it exchanges the heat to give cold bottoms and hot wash. The preheater then only has to give a modest increase in temperature, in my experience from about 75 to 90 degrees. And that consumes a lot less power. So all that sounds pretty reasonable, and my experience with different columns was that it did improve their performance, but not to the extent that it changed an inadequate stripping column into an adequate one. My frustrations with stripping columns led me to try this sloping tube, which is cheap and easy to make and performs well. You have to match steam flow with wash flow, but if that's done, it will strip a wide range of wash flow rates adequately. In the light of my previous experience, I included a preheater when I built this sloping column still. My column control system is to manage the temperature at the bottom of the stripping column first, then the temperature at the bottom few stages of the rectifying column, and leave the isothermal part of the rectifying column, which is most of it, to look after itself. With continuous distillation, alcohol that does not come out of the bottom has to come out of the top, because there's nowhere to store it. That means that the familiar situation from pot distillation of running 100% reflux, where there is a correctly set boiler power but no product being produced, 
doesn't arise. Though in reality the two situations are comparable because when no product is being produced from a pot still, the bottom of the column will be quite a bit cooler than 100 degrees. It's just that nobody measures it. Anyway, with a continuous still, when the bottom is close to 100 degrees, there must be product because there's nowhere else for the alcohol to go. In my video on continuous columns, I mentioned that I had not been able to maintain an alcohol concentration over 96% for more than 12 hours using manual control of steam power. Well, the closed loop feedback system I describe in my video on controlling the tight still solved that problem. Here is a plot of the alcohol concentration coming off the tight still with that control system measured about every 12 hours, and you can see that it remained between about 96.3 and 96.5% for two weeks. The point I'm finally meandering around to, though, is that on this graph there's a black line, and that line shows the point at which I turned off the preheater. It had been set to 91 degrees, and the temperature without it reverted to that coming from the heat exchanger, which was about 75 degrees, so about a 16 degree difference. After it was turned off, the feedback system settled on a steam power that was about 10 watts higher than it had been with the preheater turned on, which is as much as the preheater had been consuming itself. It's clear from this plot that it really made no difference to the proof of the product. While I'm on this data set, perhaps you'd forgive me another diversion. These measurements were made using a precision hydrometer that covers the range 90 to 100% and a thermometer to measure the temperature of the parrot, which was the same as the temperature of the room. Temperature correction tables for hydrometers do not have the resolution for this, so I was using an interpolated function. So, for example, this video clip shows a measurement of 95.45% that was taken at 15.625 degrees, equating to 96.43% alcohol, or about 0.08% shy of the azeotrope. I ended up with corrected alcohol concentrations and the temperatures of the room that went with them. It's not an exact concordance because these temperatures were measured when the parrot was full. These precision hydrometers are quite large, and the still is slow. It takes about three hours to fill the parrot. So the temperature measurement made does not reflect the average over that period, just the end temperature. But anyway, plotting those alcohol concentrations against room temperatures shows something interesting. What we see is the effect of varying passive reflux. When the room is cooler, heat loss from the column and so passive reflux is higher and the concentration is higher, whereas when the room is warmer, passive reflux is lower, as is the alcohol concentration. I guess that's old hat, but have you ever seen it demonstrated this close to the azeotrope? Anyway, back to preheaters. When a column's performance is marginal, a preheater helps. And large-scale columns usually are marginal, because you don't want to pay for and maintain a longer column than you need. But on the scale of my small continuous still, it is simpler, cheaper, easier, more reliable, and in particular less prone to dangerous failure, to ditch the preheater and make the stripping column generously long to compensate.